Hey everyone, there's new paddle companies coming out that are driving the price of the market down, believe it or not. Rather than driving everything up, we've got new companies like this company, Baller, that I'm about to review, that are driving the price down with high quality paddles for actually affordable prices. This paddle retails for $139. With our pirate discount, you get a $14 off of that. And this paddle is only $125. But we're gonna do something a little bit different in this review. We're gonna do a playing review first, and then I'm gonna give you the specs at the end of the review and give you my closing thoughts. Let's talk about the serves and the returns with this paddle. All right, my first few swings with this paddle. Right off the bat, I can tell it has some pop to it. I, it really, um, I didn't have to work too hard to get it all the way to the back line. So I definitely know that this paddle is a little bit more poppy than the paddles I've been playing normally. But definitely it's a thermoformed Gen 2 paddle. It's got plenty of strength to it, but it feels controllable. It doesn't feel like a Gen 2 paddle. It, it has a very softer, plush, more plush feel. But with the power that I'm getting with it, I definitely know it's a, a Gen 2 paddle. And pretty good spin. I, I, I put this in the double black diamond from 6-0 kind of range. Um, it, it can spin decently. It's not a top spinning paddle, but it's not at the very bottom. But overall, I, you know, just serve and serve return felt comfortable. So this paddle actually has a spin rate of about 2015 and it has a twist weight of 6.41. So it's very stable for blocking and it has a decent amount of spin. This is right next to the double black diamond in, in as far as specs go. It does good on power. It does good on a little bit of the pop. Let's see what it does on the drop shots. First game playing with this is starting to dial it in. Actually, this is like my first volley and chest mass match with it and I noticed it was a little bit more poppy than the paddles I'm used to playing with so it's got really good power and good pop but um, I found I wasn't losing the control aspect of it I was able to hit the soft shots get things to dip down into the kitchen didn't have to work too hard to uh, keep it there it has, it has a good twist weight doesn't twist much in your hands, so really wide sweet spot. So that was a uh, nice, and this is the hybrid shape that I'm playing with here. Barely missed that one. Tried to cut with a scalpel there. Butcher knife would have been fine. But yeah, so able to get myself up to the kitchen there. Not a problem. Good deep serves and returns, but then look at that. I'm able to, without much effort, get it into uh, the kitchen, get myself up to the kitchen, and get to uh, playing defensively. And then because it's head light, you can just flick your wrist and be offensive. Starting to dial it in with the paddle. So let's look at the power and the pop. Let's look at how this paddle performs in those two categories. This is where I noticed a little bit better performance out of this paddle was really in the power and the pop. A pop is you like your counter punches, your quick punches, and then pop, power would be like the full swings like I just did there, full drive shots. Notice that without much effort, I'm hitting the back line. I'm able to keep them back offensively, so definitely a offensive leaning paddle. Uh, but it's head light, so very maneuverable, I found, and um, able to generate some really good pop with it. You can see here just the drives and some decent dip so it's not would be a top spinning paddle but it's um, better than average spin that I'm generating with this paddle but the put away as you can see there I just snuck one past Ethan and then look at these returns all the way back to the back line hooking them all the way back and making him having to lob because I put it right on his feet and then you know just the serves and then being able to just rip into the next one and know that it was going to dive felt like this uh paddle had a really large sweet spot a really comfortable sweet spot but look at that backhand there it really can generate some velocity with the paddle 
So I found it, you know, controllable, but at the same time had a lot of power. All right, so I think that's where one of the strengths of this is with a swing weight of 116 and the unibody thermoform paddle and the wide sweet spot. This thing becomes a, a really good weapon offensively, but we know that everything's won in the kitchen. So let's see how it does in the dinks, and then I'll give you my closing remarks. When I assess new paddles, I typically gauge them in the kitchen line and what I feel like I can do there. This paddle, because of the high twist weight, um, which uh, I haven't looked at the measurements yet, I'm just going by feel, this paddle definitely is great at the kitchen line. You have good touch with it, but it has enough power and pop that when you when you want to speed up the ball or sneak something past somebody, it, you're capable of doing it. Um, but I really felt comfortable up at the kitchen in dink battles, able to put the ball where I want with with nice uh, touch and uh, comparable spin. It's not a high, it's not the highest spinning paddle, but really good feel on it. And it doesn't necessarily feel like a Gen Two paddle. It really feels more uh, along the Gen One, a little bit softer feel to it. Uh, as far as the plushness of the ball, but that doesn't affect performance in the least. Really enjoyed this at the kitchen. So as you can see, I think this is a definitely a all-court paddle. It definitely can play singles with its power and its pop. Above average spin, it's probably in the 2000 ranges, just like the Double Black Diamond and the Vatic. The other body shapes just like this. There's some in the Yola line, so they all kind of fit in this hybrid shape where they do the rounded top. This is not flared like the double black diamond, but I would say it's very comparable. And as I promised, so this is Torre T700 raw carbon fiber. So they're using the good carbon fiber weave. You can take a look at the weave right here. Uh, this is a 16 and a half by seven and a half, right? So it's the normal shape that we're used to, 16 and a half by seven and a half. It's got a five and a half inch handle with a 4.25 inch circumference. I really like the bevels on this guy. You can see the bevels here, really good feeling handle and good bevels that you can really feel um, in your grip. So um, with the 4.25 inch and with the five and a half, the, the neck goes up here a little bit. So plenty of room here for the two-handed backhand. So plenty of room here to get your hand up on here. So overall, I think this paddle is definitely well worth the money. $139 with a pirate discount, pirates 10, you get a 10% off of that. There's a $125 paddle and it's a newer company. I like the look of it. I like the aesthetics. I like the white edges and uh, the baller logo looks pretty cool. So this is the Heat, and next I'll be reviewing their long handle version, the Pro. If you don't like this brand or you wanna see another brand, uh, check these out.